Right, okay, we're back. Uh, what day is it now? Is it day four? Uh, yeah. Day four. We, we're well, obviously, we're well behind um, because we're videoing, basically. I didn't finish editing last night till half seven and it wasn't uploaded till nine o'clock. So just think about that before you leave your comments, right? We're literally a full day and I am losing money. And on that point, I want to drop to Big Roscoe. Big Roscoe. <laughs> My zip down, Jen. Right. Yeah. So... <laughs> we're going to show you big <laughs> right big roscoe right i'm not after a pat on the back yeah right and i'm not going to give you any more time than this little bit of time there's two types of trolls and basically you are trolling um keyboard for what warrior. keyboard warrior yeah for whatever reason you're doing it now i always find there's two types there's intelligent ones and then there's ones that are really like um unintelligent for one choice of a better word i'm just going to read out your last line on your last comment and that's as far as i'm going to go and let people make up their mind about your intelligence so what you've actually put is i watched al your videos but every new hold h-u-h-o-l-d use our tell poor people you're not making money on this liars what does that mean so I watched all your videos, but every new hold use I tell poor people you're not making money on these liars. I, I, I still, I, that whole thing of calling yourself big, whatever, it's like you've obviously got some kind of um, issue about your size or whatever. I'm not quite sure, but either way, you've decided to troll me. So I'm going to leave it at this today now because... I think it's just riling you, winding you up a little bit. Um, I don't know what it is you don't like about me. But what I would do, Roscoe, if I watch something on YouTube and I don't like it, I just move on to the next thing and I have a stress-free life then because of that. Whereas you're sat in your house or in your van or in your car or whatever it is you're doing and you're thinking about me. Um, and, and I don't know why you would do that. So my advice to you, Roscoe, is carry on with your business and your life and making all your money and... Um, for your big house and your kids and your Range Rover, like you've said, and supporting your local communities, and I'll keep on doing what I do, um, and then we'll both have a happy life, and hopefully we'll never meet. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave it now. Right, the glue has gone off, yeah, polyurethane glue, it's expanded. Could I have a shovel, please, Jen? Um, like I said, it's gap filling. Did it rain last night? We're not sure, are we? Right, just shovel like that, get the glue off, you can see it's actually filled the gaps there, look, yeah, so that'll stop any rain going in there. We're going to clear off that, so we've got an issue with this, so it's not an issue, it's just a different way of building it. So the doors are going on this elevation here, yeah? The window's on that side elevation there, John. What are you chuntering about? There's a, the there's a door, there's a door going there. So I spoke to the customer, what, what I would have done is like to have run the roof that way, yeah? But when the customer looks at it from the front of the house, he will see a slight pitch on the roof so he doesn't want that he wants it to run back to front so what we're going to do we're going to build that wall first which will be our lowest wall we're then going to build the cheeks for the bifolds and then we're going to build the side walls in situ with a pitched with a raked top on with a raked header um, and I'm going to show you how we're going to cut them at an angle and get them in so these two side walls unfortunately for the bloke I said that we were going to lift a five meter wall on the zone we're not going to do that now unfortunately because it won't be OS speed um, but that back wall will always be build it. Them front cheeks we won't always be, but we'll build them. And we're gonna build this frame in situ and then clad it while it's on. Um, we're gonna, so we're gonna do this for all intents and purposes now become the back wall. So we're gonna do this wall first. We have our internal stud height, our internal, our back wall stud height. It's all in the build pack. So I'm obviously in, in I'm trying to run a business. So if you wanna buy a build pack, it'll give you all the measurements. So I'm not gonna go to that much detail. I'll tell you exactly how long each stud is because I, you know, I, I am trying to earn some money. Anyway, we've got the bottom plate and the top plate. Basically, the bottom plate sits on the floor. The top plate sits at the top of the studs. Um, that is for the back wall there. John is now going to run, <coughs> excuse me, at 400 centres. You can see what he's doing there. He's hooked his tape on. He's got both lem lengths of timber. Yeah, they're in line with each other. So he's now going to transfer his 4, 8, 12, 400 marks on there. And that's where the studs will go. The reason why the 400 centres, um, you remember the floor was 400 spacings, that's for the insulation, but your wall needs to be 400 centres because your plasterboards and your OSB work out at 1.2, so you want 400 centres because obviously that goes into 1.2. So he's got his stud markings there now, so he'll have one at the end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. David, you can fire away, mate. Nine, David's cutting the studs. 
<coughs> so these are the studs. So just to explain to you there, look, that's the bottom plate, that's the top plate, and that's the stud. And that will create your stud wall. Um, John's gonna now just, he'll set them up there. But, um, for ease of showing you what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I told you right from the start, we're gonna try and slow it right down. Um, just to try and explain to you how we do it, um, just so that you can possibly have a go yourself, really. So Davey's gonna cut them. Um, John, do you just um, f film, Jen, what, what he's doing. Did you get a gun out, John? <coughs> you what, mate? Um, take them if you want, Davey. Will you, um, will you get a Milwaukee out as well, Davey? Right, let's talk about nail. Let's talk about nail guns before we go any further. Um, and nails. Um, yeah, and which is the best nail gun? Right, these are the nails we use simply because they come from our timber merchant, Viper Nails. Um, the 90 mil smooth, you get 2,202 bottles of gas. And they are smooth, yeah. 3,300 is a 63 mil ring cuts. And can you see the rings on there, yeah? They're the ring cut nails. We'll use them for the roof and for the OSB. This will be for the stud work, along with screws as well. Right, my choice of weapon is a Pazlord IM350 Plus. Um, I've not used the new one, simply because when they bring out a new gun, they have the um, they have the market for the nails and gas, and nobody's allowed to make them for a certain length of time, and they're charging an absolute fortune. Um, they have actually brought out another 350 Plus, which tells me that their belief in the 350 Plus is stronger than the belief in the new gun. Um, the new 350 Plus has a better grip on it. It's got a, you see this back with that? See, watch this one. See, I'm having to use two hands to get that out. They've now adjusted that so it comes, it's, it's easier, so you can one-handed operation on that. And they've also followed suit with Milwaukee. To load this gun, what you have to do is pull that back, drop your nails in, and then release that. But what they've done now on the new 350 Plus, I'll just show you. So let's say your nail gun is, you can put your rack of nails in like that and pull that back and it will load then rather than ejecting the nails. Very much like the Milwaukee, just so I think they've followed suit on that. And something I just want to drop on as well. You know, I've gave away a few of these 350 pluses. Um, I do like the gun, yeah. I'm not, I'm not slagging it down completely, but in the winter time, it doesn't work. That's why we opted for the Milwaukee's. John's going to tell you about the Milwaukee in a minute. Um, I did mention the Paz Lord. There's a few things. The indicator light, it's hidden behind your fingers. It, uh, to me, it would have been a lot better on the back of the gun where you're looking at it on a regular basis. An audible sound to tell you maybe the gas is running out or the battery's running out, John, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? No? And another thing which seems absolute madness to me, bottles of gas, disposable gas. Why are we not bringing cartridges to our local dealer and he's refilling them? It doesn't make any sense in this day and age that we're throwing away that gas. But I have said that to Paz Lord. Um, and another thing, <laughs> it doesn't work in the winter. So in there is where your gas goes. The gas freezes in the winter and it stops it working. Now I know a lot of lads on site, you'll have a bottle of gas down the front of your pants. I know Jen, when she's doing the little pins, you'll put them in your brow, in the little, the little bottles of gas. Um, there's them bottles of gas are for sale, by the way, the old ones. <laughs> um, so, so why not, why not? Surely the boffins at Pazlord can come up with some kind of thermal blanket in there, which a, either use this more battery, which would sacrifice in winter, wouldn't we, John? Yeah. If we had to change the battery a little bit more often yeah. because it would keep in the gas warm, we'd Bad be happy. Batteries. Wouldn't be a problem, would it, yeah? Or is there no way of harvesting the, the heat from the, um, from, from the, from the explosion yeah. in the chamber? You know, to warm the gas, I don't know. Um, because it is a fantastic gun. It's lightweight, I think it's about three kilos. I think that's what they weigh. Um, and it's, it's a proven gun that just fails in the winter. That's why we got them, John. Do you want to stick it on and talk about them? So the Milwaukee. Well, I know I'm a Milwaukee fanboy, but I'm going to leave that out of the equation this time. Basically, between this gun and that gun, the only negative to this gun to that gun is that it's really heavy. It, that's it. But everything else from the gun is just better. It's just got more power, it fires quicker, it can put the nails in on an angle steeper. Maybe because of the weight, that could be because and of the weight. This will not put in a ring cut 90mm nail all no, the way. Not that, every time anyway, but that. This does. 
Uh, if they could lighten this off, this the pass load would be gone. We'd get rid of the pass load. I don't think they will lighten it off. They might lighten it a bit. I don't think it'll match the pass load anytime soon. So the negative to the gun is heavy, but everything else, it just whoops the pass load. You don't need gas either, so that's a bonus. Sometimes I find, and I don't know, when, when you put a new rack of nails in, it will double fire the last nail and the first nail from, from the new rack. Have you noticed that? It, I have, but it is three it year old and it's done a lot of work I now. I've never had no it. service, no nothing. All right, I'm not sure about that. They've had, we've serviced them and cleaned them. This has never had anything. You just take it out and use it. So choice of gun, this is lighter, it works most of the time. That's heavier, works all of the time. Or when we first started, we had an air compressor done, didn't we? That um, was a king, wasn't and it? And we had, um, I think we, did, we might have had a silver line nail. Yeah, the cheap first. as chips. And yeah. I think they're about 90 quid, get a compressor for 100 yeah. quid, would you? Yeah. used yeah and, and they never miss a beat they're absolutely brilliant the only downside to that is we were trailing a horse over at roof and it was dangerous and that and then we just decided to get with the times and go with the nail guns so pass load iron 350 plus milwaukee um never lets you down this lets you down when it's cold or you can go air compressor which is cheaper um and it'll do the job for you basically it won't ever let you down compressor no. i don't think it ever it was brilliant and you can pump up your tires when you get a flat tire with it yeah you can yeah right okay so without further ado david is going to jump on the nails and you can also use different tools on your air compressor that's true Never thought yep. about that. so without further ado david is going to jump on the nail gun with john um you can see david's got his eye protection on he's also got his Wonder Grips, yeah. Jen got sent Wonder Grip gloves, like I said before, she gets sent all kinds of things. And I got sent, asked to be sent a bird feeder. Didn't you send me one? Just asked, did I want a bird feeder? Um, I mean, can you imagine that? <laughs> Putting a bird feeder there. So, what do you think about this bird feeder? Right, so what they're gonna do, they're gonna put three nails in each stud. Like I say, um, slowing it right down for you so you can see. So let me just show you some of what, what Davey's done there. Davey, don't fire, please. Right, what he did, he lined up his timber like that and then he pulled his hand away further than the length of the nail. So if that nail curls out like that, it's not going to go into his hand. I don't know, he's, he's naturally started doing that now. Before he might go like that, but the nail could go into his hand. So what he's done, he's lined it up and then he slid his hand just naturally out of the way, more than the length of the nail, so he's not going to shoot himself. Isn't that right, Davey? Yeah. So three nails. So, I mean, you could be anal about this and, and space that gap absolutely 100%, but it doesn't actually matter as long as you got somewhere halfway on there, yeah? Then that will carry your sheet of plasterboard. It will also carry your sheet of OSB at a 400 centre. That gun sounds like it's skipping or is it not, John? No, Liam, there's a big knot in timber. All oh, right. It's out twice. There's a big trap on the timber here. Uh, yeah, so what what might happen is your timber might not be might not be straight. You might have a little well, lift in there, it. You can see there's a twist. It's, oh, can you see there? I don't know if you can see that. There's probably maybe a four mil gap there. So what John will do now, he will lift that up to, to the height, and again he's falling on the knot there. So when you're nailing, what you need to be doing, right, is looking at that knot and thinking, right, have you done that nails, John? Or can I use it? He's done it here. Tom. So I'd be looking at that now as I'm naturally nailing it. I'll get my timber right there. I'll put one in the bottom there, because I know if I put one there, it, it's a good chance of curling out on me. I'll just go to the side of it. Watch, I'll put one in and see what happens. There, you see? So try and avoid nailing into knots. Even with the power of the Milwaukee, it, it still will struggle getting into a solid knot like that. Um, so what I'll have to do now with that is bend it till it snaps and come off. I've just done another one for you, John, and balls that one up as well, mate. You're welcome. I did it, I did it, John, as a, as a demo. As a demo. So, six digit number. There will be a six digit number, or maybe there already has, and you will win this Sternos hammer. Yeah, it's lightweight. Yeah, it's a quality little bit of kit. It's engineered really well. Yeah, it's green. Perfect color for Oakwood, and it's 13 ounces. Aluminium shaft, yeah. Six digit number. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a burner phone. You're gonna send me that number. Yeah, and we will randomly pick a winner, but I'll let you know when that happens. And don't forget, I'm going to keep banging on about this. And the reason why I'm going to bang on about it and all is because it's going to upset, upset Big Roscoe, isn't it? Yeah, that's us. Yeah, that's what we've been nominated for. Most charitable business of the year. Um, 
I'm not looking for a pat on the back, I'm just looking to win a trophy. And do you know what? It's not a trophy for me to win, it's not a trophy for these guys here to win, it's a trophy for everybody who has actually taken part, yeah, spent money yeah. and supported us throughout this time. So if we win, it'll be a win for all. Okay. Right, they've built the wall at 400 centres now. There's a funny thing with this OSB, it comes in either Imperial or Metric. Um, Imperial should be four foot, which would be 1220. Metric should be 1200, but as you can see there, it's 1197. Um, right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and rack the wall. I've showed you this loads of times. Um, so let's say they've built the wall, yeah? Forget that one. Let's say they've built the wall and to exaggerate it, it's wrapped like that. But what we want is a nice square wall, yeah? Because when that is square and it sits on our level floor, which we know our floor is level, then that wall will be plumb. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use the, the sheet. That is a right angle there. <coughs> so, if, excuse me, if we fasten our sheet, and they will be fastening it with these 63 mil ring cut viper nails. Um, they've got the little rings on, which makes them get a better grip and they're harder to pull out. So that's what they're going to use there. But what they will do, they will line it up like this first. Can you pull that bottom in, David? Give, give us a nail gun, David. Sorry, John, I just need to move that shovel as well. Just got a bottom for me, John. Yes. And just tap it up a mill. And let's go. Yeah. There. Right, so what I can see now is that sheet there, yeah, is dead on corner there. So what John will do now, he'll get his length there. Yeah. Are you on, John? And then I'll go down. And fix it to there. Now, to exaggerate it, can you pull that frame round to me, David? Right there. So you can see there, look, it's a square sheet, but, but the frame is running out like that, which means the frame is racked, which is like that now to exaggerate it, yeah. So the way we can get that back then is, is get that like that. And that frame now is starting to become perfectly square. What will happen then, they'll go down there. John, will you mark the 400s and we'll explain why you're marking them as well? Um, so when they put the other sheet on now, they'll get the corner there, they'll nail it down that leg, yeah? And then they'll do the same with the head. And that means the wall will be perfectly square. So when the square wall sits on the level floor, the wall will be plumb. And that's how you rack your walls. What John's gonna do now, because he's left-handed as well. Everybody in this team is left-handed. Davey's that by, must mean by right. you, Davey. That must mean right-handed, he's getting a bit. Not, he's not buying that way. He's, <laughs> he can use both hands, can't you, mate? I write with my left hand, but everything else is my right hand. Yeah. John's had a little wobble, he's been on sauce last night. <laughs> Right, so what he's done there, he's drawn the 400 line down because we know we've got 400 centres on our timbers. So that enables you then... ..to go down and nail the timber without actually knowing it's there. And he'll do the same at 800, which will be the next timber. What we will do as well... Um, is that my Sharpie, Jen? a little bit harder to do it this way. It's easier to do it on the sheets over there, but because we're trying to show you on the video, I wanted to do it like this. Sorry, John, I'm gonna go right between your legs then. <laughs> so that'll be the, another nail line there. They'll nail that. And what I'll also do in all is mark the center of that timber there. And then, same as yesterday, look, I'm just locking my finger off, yeah? I haven't got any gloves on those, so I'm going to go real slow because it's a buggy, you always get splinters off this stuff. And that there means we can nail there along that line as well. Yeah, Not a rack of nails, pal. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I'll just do this one, John. Um, so what will happen then? Is there any nails out, Jen? Can you see? No. She's looking on the side to see if any nails have curled out or if I've missed and gone there because when that wall plate, the bottom plate there, they've got a hammer when the bottom plate there sits on the floor. We don't want anything sticking which will hold the wall up. Also, what we will do then as well, 
is our sheets want to be four inches longer. Two, three, two thousand and thirty-five, I think, wasn't it? That's that's the centre one there, Jen. And that means then when our sheet stands up, I'll cut that, that off in a minute, yeah? It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. But that there will all get cut off. And when that wall stands on there, the base plate will sit there and the OSB will slide down over there. Yeah, so any moisture that does hit the wall, which it's not going anywhere, will run down the vapor barrier and on the floor and not onto the wall. Okay, so, yeah, sorry. Um, right, so what we'll do now, we'll carry an OSB in that. Um, are we going to be remembering this afterwards? Because we're not doing the walls. We'll do it all we in one wrap. It. It's really easy to do. Yeah, it do not take it. long, like, we might as well just do it while it's down, don't we? Okay, okay. Right, well, so what we'll do, we'll vapor barrier this wall and then we'll stand it up. I know it's only a three metre wall or thereabouts, but I'll stand it up and I'll show you how to get it up on your own safely. Um, but I think we, we will definitely try a five metre, we just won't be able to do it today, that's all. But I'll show you how to get this up on your own safely. We're going to now cover the back wall with a breathable membrane. Jen's going to hang over about six to eight inches there. I'm pulling an annoying area. Um, it's basically, it allows the building to breathe but stops any water ingress. It's a roofing membrane, that's what it's actually used for roofing. There's loads of these on the market. This one's from Tool Station. Uh, I think it's about £70 a roll now. What we'll do sometimes is we'll get, this is a metre roll, sometimes we'll get a 1.5 roll and then that 1.5 on the bottom and the metre on the top, you'll see in a minute now. So if you imagine this is the top of your wall, yeah, so you're overlapping like you would on the roof, and we're just bringing it to that overlap line there, which is about six inches, and you can see how shy of the top there, but if you buy it one metre, 1.5, it doesn't happen. I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm gonna do to save, there we go, it's like that. I'll show you what I'm gonna do to save on the waste in the felt. overlap it if you if you run short and you want to join it but just make sure you overlap it enough so what i want to do now is get this on here sorry. yeah and when she staple that to the top i will then trim off the overhang and then that will use, the overhang will use for another part of the wall then. No, it's just this Stanley knife, always too much to have on you. Yeah. Comes in really handy for loads of parts of the job. That's the best knife I've found on the market ever in my time. And we've all got one of them. Let's mark them on, yeah. Give us a full length of seal, that's David. Right, I'll do it one now. Come out, bro. <laughs> right, what we normally do, we normally batten this, but because we're doing the, the other wall slightly different, we're going to batten it in one full go. So what we're going to do now, Jen's looking up to see where the nails are. Which Dave side is, are you putting it onto this nails side? Nails are on this side. Right, you see how they put the line? So they're both on the nail side there, we're now going to strike the line down. So when we come to batten that, we'll know exactly where we need to be fixing to. You'll see in a minute once we've done one or two lots. So there. You remember when we nailed the OSB and we, we put the 400 centres yeah. on? That's where the marks are, the centres for the um, uprights as well. So when we put the slate back on there, we'll know exactly where to nail. Is yours one now, David? Yeah. Try that one instead. When we first started, we used to get right abuse for using sharpies at work, didn't we, John? <laughs> um, you know, instead of pencils, but... <laughs> the choice of champions. 
Right, so this wall is, is it slightly over three metres? Does anybody remember? Yeah, 3,200. It's on floor, 12. 3,212. So, to answer the question we had yesterday, um, I'm going to try and lift this up on my own. I'll lift it up safely as well so it doesn't hurt you. So, a three metre wall, it shouldn't be a problem for the fair ground to it. Well, the good news is if it's you do all wear all here, aren't yeah. we? So. <coughs> if you look back, I did a solo build, didn't quite get to the end for various reasons, but um, I lifted the wall and then it all fall over, David. Did it fall off the end of this one? I can't remember. It nearly went yeah. over, didn't it? But I did, I did that one on my own just to sort of show you that you know you can do it on your own with minimum tools. Right, you stand over there then, let me see if I can do this on my own, then, yeah? John, do you want to come here and I'll just show you where I'm going to position this? So, I'm going to position this. Um, maybe there, to be fair. So what I want, want to happen is I want that OSB to drop down the front. Yeah. So I'll position it there. Um, I'll get myself two blocks because what I don't want to happen is this to trap my fingers. block there and the block there then if I have to put it down quickly um, it's not going to trap my fingers right what do you want to try you need to do any press ups first do I have a warm up no Go right. oh look at that come on big gen right. don't drop it off the back that's it, perfect. She, right, just to hold it there. I'll just hold it there for her. It's all right. No, I've got it. Right, so what she did then, um, the OSB hit the, hit the Aga floor. So what she did, she gave it a little gentle kick just to send it that way, that way a little bit. And she knows she's just hanging over now. And what she doesn't want now is for that to fall. So to answer the question yesterday, that was a three metre wall, slightly a little bit bigger. Um, Jenny's strong light bulb. How did it feel? All right. Could you have done five? I think, I think I could, but it'd take me a little bit of... A bit more hunch. Yeah. Oh, I right. would have thought so, I would as well. Might have to do some press-ups before. <laughs> a little bit of a warm-up. Yeah. Right. Some squats, lunges. A few lunges. Right, so a three metre wall, no problem. Jen's got it no problem. So five metres, she thinks she can do it, I think she can do it, and I think you better do it yourself as well. John comes round to that size there, John. Can you see the OSB now touching the floor? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And it's the same on this side as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to send the wall to John a little bit. Oh, too much, is that too much, John? Yeah. Then it bounce me a bit. I dare for you, do it. I can't, I'm holding camera. Just, just there, there. There, there. You there? Yeah, you probably come to me and Mill. Yeah, perfect. Right, so David has already gone and got some 100 mil screws. Right, what David's going to do now, he's going to put one screw in each bay. We know the wall is pulled tight to the OSB. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that, David? <laughs> so, what we'll do, we do normally know, but what we'll do, we'll go around and we'll put one screw in each bay, which will then pull the wall down to the floor tight. But I can assure you now, if John lets go of that, Oh, it's, got, wind. it's got three screws in, there's a bit of wind up, but it's actually holding, so it's fine. So my advice to you was, if you're going to do this on your own, have your drill hanging off your pocket. Some screws in your pocket, you get your wall up, you're happy it's in a good position, and even if you just tack a couple of screws in, just to hold it temporary in place, make sure you're in a good position. What Jen's going to do now, she's going to go nail the base down, Right, so let's watch let's watch the, the pass load. Stop there, Jen. Let's watch the pass load on rapid fire and see how many she gets in there. Okay. Thank you. Right, so she's got a few sticking out. That's the pass load for you, um, on, on, the, on the fast speed. Yeah, so this has got two speeds, it's got single or bump mode.
finger on the trigger. Did Make you like that? Back battery. Please. Ah. <laughs> right, take two. So it's practically fired a full magazine and there's only one nail sticking up. Um, so how much are they John? 550 quid. With batteries? 600 quid. Yeah, about six, 600 pounds will buy you that. Price, really, with two batteries. Pazlo Diane 350 plus. I think you can get it for about 520 at this moment in time. Um, but that won't miss a beat. It's just the weight of it. You like that? It's a bit too heavy for me. Yeah. Bit too heavy. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of weight, and especially if you're leaning out like that all day. <laughs> right, right. This is a little bit different as this building. So normally, what we would do, we'd have us bifolds on that elevation, yeah. But because the customer's house is here, the bifolds are going on this elevation instead, which means we've got a short, a shorter wall there for our bifold doors. Now these particular bifold doors are 2,600. We leave a 15, a 15 minute. We leave a 15 mil gap, um, seven and a half mil either side. That allows for any movement in the in the walls, so we can still get our doors in plumb. And also, what it allows for then is when we have our reveal inside. Um, let me think how that looks now. We have our reveal and then the door sort of goes like that. And um, that 15 mil then, that gap there allows, it works out so that the skirting board fits in the gap between the doors basically. To, for, for, I mean, it's a bit hard to explain to you, but I will explain to you when we do that. Um, right, so we've cut our height. What we're gonna do again, sorry John, I'll keep calling you back over. So what we do, um, we'll have a timber like that, two together. Then we'll have another one like that. We'll have a header piece on like that. And we normally have a bottom piece on like that. And then over here, we'll have exactly the same. Yeah, header piece and the bottom piece. And then our steel will sit on the top. Um, if, the if the wall is longer than the steel, then we'll have a higher part of the wall there. And basically the steel will sit on like that. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say. But what we're doing this, because it's a smaller one, we're running the timber straight through the bottom to keep the two walls in line with each other. And I'm going to cut that off at a later date. So I'm going to double the timber up, single timber, put a head on it, fix it to the bottom plate. David's going to do the same on that side. And then that will allow our steel to go on the top. Um, what I'm going to do then is the nail this together. Now they're a 90 mil nail, this timber is approximately 45 mil. Um, so, so, so it's not gonna come out of the side. What I'm gonna do is nail at an angle. <coughs> what I'm doing there, I'm just getting the timbers in line with each other. And then I'm gonna roll it over. And I'm going to do exactly the same. I'll just get a hammer just to break that in. Right, so what I'm creating there is a double timber to take the weight of this steel. Yeah, and then I'll have another single one there just to carry So this is the head. Let me get that as straight as I can. Six nails in there. So remember, if they do bring out the gas, you heard it here first. Um, it seems a no-brainer to me that you would recharge the gas rather than sending them a landfill. Davy has already pre-marked for me. What happened is that needs to go like that. Sorry John, I'm sorry. And then that one will go on there like that. And that's my side cheek. If you watch his other videos, you'll have seen him do it slightly different way. 
we've used the string line to get the bottom through but because this is a lot shorter we're just opting for this bit of timber just because i've picked a straight bit basically so jen and davy are doing exactly the same thing on this side the double timber is to take the weight of the steel not gonna like buckle under it yep. i think I think when, when everybody starts here, I've always been on the case about getting everything dead parallel, dead flush, dead tight, dead right. Um, simply because what happens if, if you tend to give people an inch, they'll take a mile. So I know what tolerance I can get away with, but often don't tell them the tolerance so that they'll work to an exact... Yeah, this thing just to make sure it's right, it's an exact measurement. Hey, Davey's already measured it. You can, you can check it, Jen, if you want. Go on then, Davey, just hold that there, we'll hold the tape mate, on that line. No, 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 hold, hold it, Davey, on the wood, yeah. that's the one there, the one. Yeah, so what have we got? 2,617. 17, right, so we're, we're two mil bigger than what we want it to be, but big is better than smaller. Um, no, it's fine, John, the two mil will be good. Um, like I said before, that, that, that distance there, so let's say our wall, to exaggerate, is like that. I can still put my doors in plumb, yeah, which I need to put them in plumb. That 15 mil will allow us for that, and it will also allow the skirting board to slide in beside the door on the door reveals, because that's something we've fallen foul of before, isn't it, as well, yeah? Yeah. Okay, um, right, so David's line now, like I said a minute ago, I've been on the case about getting it dead right, dead square, and you can see how long he was taking there to get that right. And he'd be happy with that. Um, it needs it needs to be square and right, basically, doesn't it, Jen? What am I trying to say? I don't know. All right, right, Jen. Same time as me, yeah. So it's going to want to flex otherwise. All right. So what we'll do now? We'll get that into the front. There, we'll bang a couple of screws in there for us, just to hold it. How are you, Jen? Just a, are you just a little bit over send, that? Send it to me. Does that? Do you want to come out towards John a little bit? No. I feel like I feel I can see the grey. Yeah. Right. We're in a good position now. So what we're going to do, Dave is going to put um, this. So it's square through because I know that's straight. So David can put two two screws in there, two screws in there, and then we'll nail it. And then at a later day, I will cut that down there, cut that down there, and that will be our. Uh, that's it, David. Our door opening. But what we'll need to do now is, like I say, it's completely different this because it's sort of backwards. That wall there normally would have been that wall and that wall there would have been that wall. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put two rakes in there to, um, to, to plumb that wall up properly. We're going to plumb this wall up as well because I don't know if John can see. It's, it's like that, it's like that, as well as like that. So that's that there as an opening basically. What we need to do now, there's 160 mil steel going on the top of that. So what we will do when we put our stud in here, our first stud, we will make it 160 mil taller than this wall. And then this stud here will be this height and that will create the rake on the building so all the water will run that way. All right, zebra for stand. I'm gonna answer a few questions. So what we're going to try and do is answer the questions when we're taking a break because um, it's starting to drag a little bit and I need to get this build done. Okay, but we want to answer as many questions as we can, but we're not going to go and revisit old questions. Um, we're now on the walls today. Um, we may, Jen's looking at me, I think we are, we are revisiting a few old questions. Yes. All right, fire away. Okay, so David Williamson, how to calculate the rise and fall if the not if notches are required or not? Um, I'm assuming you mean whether or not you need the bird's mouth on your roof timber when it sits on your wall plate. The roof on a permitted development on the flat roof, if you've gone to our sort of spec, and you won't be much more on any other kind of spec as well under permitted development, will be about two, three, four degrees, something like that. Um, you don't actually need a bird's mouth on your roof timber because it practically sits flat on the wall anyway and to ask on the head of the wall and to answer another question and all somebody asked um, so you've got let's to exaggerate that's your wall that's your roof timber I've exaggerated it he asked you cut the roof rafters plumb for the fascia to sit but because it's such a small degree you don't actually need to cut the rafters plumb um, just 
the square as they are, and you can't actually tell. Right. Jaeger Andrev is used a warm roof, warm roof, a warm roof with fur. Really? <laughs> Where he was. Should he not choice to reduce the height and how to put fascia around giving huge reveal of 275 millimetres? Yeah, it's it's. A, I've seen it. I mean, I'm not going to show you, but I think the customer's got one on his extension here as well, and he's got a massive fascia like that. Um, it's not attractive. The minute the minute we do a warm roof, and we may do a warm roof on a build we've got in May, um, I'm going to show you how so you can reduce the... It's too complicated, but basically what you want to do is, is have your roof timbers um, supported on the inside of your wall of some joist hangers so that you've dropped the overall height so that half of your roof joist is actually sat into your wall a little bit, if that makes sense, and then you'd notch the top bit out to create your overhang. Um, it's not ideal, but it does get rid of that big stupid um, fascia which you're talking about, which granted is not attractive at all, but there is a way around it, and you're right to notch it and drop it down internally a little bit. It's also asked, what gap are you leaving for windows and doors, and why not with a 3 meters, uh, three millimeter clearance? Right, okay, so it's timber build, um, we all make mistakes. Um, the building will move sometimes, uh, slightly. The way we, and we're just doing it now, we've literally just created the door opening we're doing it on a three meter bifold we will leave approximately 15 millimeters which will give us seven and a half millimeters each side that gives us enough play so let's say the walls are racked a little bit we can put the doors in plumb and we've still got enough play to get them in plumb and it also gives us enough room on the reveal to return the skirting board in next to the bifold doors but i will show you that when the doors go on so yeah we leave um on the bifold certainly on the bifold doors um we'll leave 15 millimeters probably maybe 10 on the windows and um, we've got a single door going in there I'll probably leave 15 on that as well um so technical support would you build a course online for people to join to create revenue for you um yeah i would but i don't know how it'd work um the, the danger i don't want to go down is I, i've produced all this information for absolutely free of charge obviously i sell the bill pack yeah that's great there's a guy who said that if he had the money he'd fly us out to uh, south america to build him one and that would be absolutely amazing or he would love to come on a course um i don't know maybe I don't know because I, I know I know there's a lot of guys that, that have, have built one, yeah. So like they might work. I, I don't know. I'm just going to randomly pick a job. They might work in an office doing some kind of computer stuff, um, which would way way beyond my techni technical skills. But and then they built one of these and they built it to a really bloody good standard. And then they've got a neighbour or a cousin or a brother or a sister that wants one and they want to build that. And they're thinking, I'm enjoying doing this. Should I change career? And what I'd say to you is, you know, you've got to go to work. You've got to enjoy yourself. So if you think that you can build one of these and you, lots of people have and you know is a change of career would you like to, would you like to learn how to do it um to slightly i mean i'm not saying you're not doing it to a great standard but maybe to a more technical standard then maybe the, there is option to maybe come and, and do a, maybe maybe a week's course and, and we'd run through all sorts of stuff like um like uh, just general construction and stuff maybe on building the gallery room because there is there is a career to be made as i said yesterday i don't know how long it will last but there's definitely a career to be made out of building garden rooms okay anthony williamson could a three-sided garden room similar to a conservatory be made and fixed to a house and what regs would be needed is thinking five by three size with good size bifolds yeah yeah you, you could because um, but you would have to, ha you had to have building regs because once you open open that house, so let's say you're going to take a window out or a door out, so you, then your three sided room becomes part of your house. You have to get building regs involved, which would mean bigger timber sizes, different insulation, and the likes of that. But yeah, it's all, in, in all essence, it's a timber frame um, extension. So yeah, you could do it, but the spec of it would be completely different. James Tigwell. To what finished standard will your kits come and will you still be able to install your own lights and electrical point? So the metal clad kits, they will come to the standard of... Um, it, right, i tell you what you do, right? If you, if you go on Skill Builder, Skill Builder builds one for Kingspan. It's under a different company name, but it's, it's essentially Kingspan. They will be exactly that same standard. So it will be um, a metal floor or I've, I've come up with another floor which will be adjustable as well so there'll be two options actually sit it on on the pad or create your own uh cassette as it was um internally and externally it would be just metal clad like the one like the pod um but it's so easy to clad it internally and externally and so when you clad it internally just want some slate buttons and then put on your wall fixing and then of course you've got your cavity gap then for your cables and everything like that so yeah the kit will be 
a box style kit and then you will modify it but it will be a fraction of the cost of kingspans hopefully pete james we understand the height for permit development is 2.5 but what about overall size does having a floor space over 15 meters square square meters make a difference yeah um some some building inspectors want you to get um building control involved and others aren't bothered because we've had them out and they're not remotely bothered um, but we did have a guy out and he come out and all he was interested in was measured in the internal floor area one one interested in the external it was just the internal because it's a usable floor area of course that matters john warman building a seven meter by four meter with a build pack both sides 700 millimeters from boundary is that okay under permitted development yeah, yeah, um, it, is, it is. I mean, we, we've built them that close as well. Um, again, sometimes building control want to get involved um, and they might want to go down the fire route as well. All depends what your neighbours are like, because your neighbours will be real nice to your face and then stitch you up afterwards. Can, David F, can you explain what timber is pressure treated and what isn't? Uh, so the pressure treated, the pressure treated, right, so the 4 by 2 the true 4 by 2 100, when I say 4 by 2 it's 4 inches by 2 inches, which is 100 mil by 50 mil. It's, and we, we need that for our 100 mil insulation to sit in. Now, it's, it comes and the timber yard pressure treat, so basically it goes in a tank and treatment is pushed into the core of it um, and the 4 by 3 is pressure treated as well the CLS the C16 or the C24 if you use that isn't pressure treated but it is treated if you google CLS it has got some treatment in it to a certain degree but what I'm going to say to you is the timber under the floor yeah it's exposed you've got some moisture and stuff like that yeah whereas the timber in the wall is encased in the OSB the breathable membrane the vapor barrier and the plasterboard so in all essence yeah it is going to get some slight moisture um, but, but nothing at all so it's, it's treated enough basically um, so pressure treated for the base the rest as it comes off the shelf and obviously the slate bands. And the slate bands are obviously pressure treated as well, yeah. Right, so th this is probably going to be... Tannalised, I believe, is, is another word for it. it? Tannalised, right, okay. So it, he's took the time to write this one out, so I am going to ask it. It's little Johnny boy, John Gibbs. We will get to the other guy in a minute. Looking at building a long garden room. Oh, we actually did this one yesterday, because he lives in a terrace. We did that one, didn't we? All right. Right, okay. I'll tell you what, we'll go straight to... Hold on, sorry. Old Nick D. Right, right. So uh, Nick, Nick, Nick has been here from the very start. I remember seeing his name popping up right at the start. Um, and do you know what? If 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 I ever do meet people, I'd love to meet Nick one day. Um, I believe he's down London somewhere. Nick, um, is it Demetrius? It uh, Dimitri A D. Yes. Demetrius. Demetrius. Yeah, I, I, apologies. I mean, I, I, I probably can't pronounce it like a right ass. So Nick, Nick D. That's what you did tell me to call you. Um, again, you, you know, you, you throughout. If you do anything on YouTube or any kind of social media, you're always going to get parasites and people that troll you. And then you get really nice people like Nick. He's always got good input. Um, you know. It, it, He's one of the he's one of them people that that you when you see his name pop up it'll bring a smile to your face and you like to read his comment. Right, so his question is Nick, fire away. For when we are cutting the sheet cladding, you don't put it all the way to the top of the building due to the slope of the roof. How much in terms of millimeters is it shorter? And did you make a jig for it last time? Right, so on the sides what we will do, um, let's let's say the wall is pitched at the side but we'll still put a square wall in and i've showed you putting the roof timbers in and the infills but we will literally put our osb square on the osb is simply to create rigidity in the building so we don't actually bring it up to the pitch um our pitch is normally about 75 mil front to back but we just put it on square um and we did create a jig for the back um well, we won't be getting out on this one but um what we did we created the jig so you could sit it on the head plate and then put the metal cladding up to it which allowed the metal cladding to be stepped down so when the wall went up and the roof went on you could still put the soffit on otherwise it would catch on the metal and that's what we created the jig for nick right chris hamilton do bill pack state exactly what timber is for what as he will be going for the kingspan panels for his roof and undecided on whether to build floor or use a concrete pad as he already has the floor yeah 100 percent. so the build pack uh, you've got your full list of materials your 5 by 2 your 4 by 2 your cls your 3 by, your 4 by 2 treated your 4 by 3 treated um and if you what you'll have to do though you'll have to read through the build pack i think there's 38 pages in it read through it and it'll say 
5 by 2 for roof and you just omit your 5 by 2 then but you will need some 5 by 2 for your front wall if you're going to put your steel on so you'll just just read the bill pack and then you'll be able to take out what you don't need because you're going to have a kingspan roof Siggy 2k would you change anything in your method warm roof or hybrid root root <laughs> hybrid roof if the permitted height is three meters yeah yeah a hundred percent um you know I, I i i've had loads of stick over the years um we we use hybrid for a simple reason it, it, it works on the permitted development on the low occupancy if the if the permitted height was three meters i would use a warm roof of course i would because it's it's foolproof isn't it it, it never ever has a risk of failing um but the hybrid roof we've been time and time back to jobs job john's got one himself he's often took the ceiling lights out um when i've been stressed because somebody's been giving me an time about the hybrid roof um, and the underside of the OSB is exactly the same and some chap I don't know can't remember his name I wish I could um, he had a report done there were five six seven pages on this report and the bottom line the last line um, it says condensation will build up but will dissipate in the warmer months and in bold capital letters it says no risk of mold growth so that there in his sense is it's enough for me anyway but you know if you want to go down warm high um warm cold or hybrid or kingspan but you know it's, it's i mean the kingspan roof and the six pound roof is practically the same as what we're doing in a certain extent right so this is quite similar drunk delilah brewery <laughs> <laughs> under permis permis permitted permis no permissible, permissible. Devel development you can actually go four metres if you use a dual pitch roof, three metres with a pent roof, but both need to be two metres away from the boundary, and the eaves can be no more than 2.5. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's correct. But as, as I said on, on the first one, and it is such a shame as well, right? Um, like the house we're doing now, it's, it's a semi-detached house. It's in quite an affluent area. Um, the garden is a good size compared to a new build, but it's not absolutely massive. So the last thing you want to do is lose garden space. So everybody that we go see, uh, bar none, has asked us to put it tight into a corner, tight to a fence, because if you've got two metres on that side and two metres on that side, and you've got a six metre build, so that'll be 12 square metres down the side you've lost, and three metres on there times two is six, so 12 and six is 18. 18 square metres of garden, that's just sat in the shade and never to be used ever again, which which is a shame, but that, that's the rule. So you are right about that, but everybody wants it tucked to the fence. Right, so this is Mark Haley, and he's, he's bought a bill pack, so he's just read the permit development requirements it seems to say that if the small got cut talk if the floor space is between 15 meters squared and 30 meters uh, 50 yeah 15 and 30 it needs to be one meter away from the boundary to avoid big building regulations is this your understanding he has his 6 by 3.5 meter build pack and now considering reducing this to 3 by 5 to get it down to 15 square meters he's also quoted what he's read if the floor area is between 15 to 30 square metres, you still don't usually have to apply for building regulations approval as long as there's no sleeping accommodation and it's more than one metre away from your boundary and is made of non-combustible materials. That's what he's read. Yes, so that that is what that is that that's that's how it is and um, probably how it's worded as well. Um, it, it, it depends, doesn't it? Because we, we honestly we, we've built them and we've had building inspectors out and have not had remotely been remotely interested. Well, all they're bothered about is whether or not you're going to sleep in that garden room because let's say everybody on the street has this annex they've now built and they're moved in the mother or the father and then it's like they're not having it do you know what i mean they're not having this this like um possibility of you living in there so that's that's where they're going on that one but we have had them out and um, we've had bigger and we've been tied up to the boundary and you know they've, they've not remotely batted an eyelid about it but the best thing to do if you're worried about it is either move it one meter away and stick to the letter of the law but the letter of the law does say then non-combustible so where do you stop with non-combustible some as we said previously some building inspectors want it block built yeah um but then if you've got block built so that's non-combustible so what are you going to do render it or are you going to clad it but then the cladding becomes combustible and then you burn the cladding and then the roof sets on fire um so it, it kind of doesn't make any sense what they're saying but if you read it it's all worded very openly and open to interpretation well, um the fact they've used the word usually yeah you you i mean usually how how it how is that 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 word in itself there is lots of terms like that usually how is that even like black and white usually you know, 
Um, I think what they do is they'll do it, and if it goes to court, then they'll interpret it the way they want, and I guess your solicitor will interpret it the way he wants and see who comes out on top. Um, but if you're worried about it, just get in touch with your council and, and get a get a letter of permitted development. Um, I can't remember what the right term is for it now, but you can get um, you can get a letter, and, and basically they said, yeah, you can build what you're going to build. Right. So um, you mentioned this a minute ago, and I found his name. It's George Websdale. Do you leave your roof timbers timber square at the ends, or do you cut them at the angle of the roof? Again, so no. So let, let's say, sorry, that's the roof to exaggerate. That's the wall. Yeah. So what he's on about? Do we cut that plum? Yeah, so it's the same shape as the wall, basically. But a little, that, that's the wall, that's the roof. So do we cut it plumb like that, yeah? yeah? Or do we leave them? But because it's such a small pitch, it's about two or three degrees, we just leave them. And you can't tell, and it doesn't affect the face or a soffit. Um, so it's no need, and there's no need to bird's mouth them either. Right, so David F, can you explain what timber is pressure treated and what isn't? You've done that. Yeah. But also, what's your take on providing ventilation or airflow inside the building to prevent mi moisture and mould? Um, so, yeah, that, that's a funny one, is that? Because, um, so we have trickle vents on the bifold doors, yeah? Um, they, they do allow ventilation of some description. Um, we did we did go down the road of actually putting um, an expanding one because I know he did tell us that he was going to sleep in. You're not supposed to, you're supposed to get planned in, but he wasn't bothered. So we did put an extractor fan in there um, for him. But I know, I did speak to a company, and I can't remember the name of them. They have a non-mechanical one, and I don't know how it does it. It's something to do with science and physics and moisture. And um, it takes the moisture out of the air without, out the air without actually expelling it through mechanical means by an electric fan. Um, and that would have been a good option. But the trickle vents are fine. We have, we have no issue with that. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> if, you want, mate. <laughs> if you've ever got a skip out your side, somebody will always pull up and I'm see what's in it. Go on quickly. Yeah, well, literally, there's concrete panels in there. If he wants to take them out, he's more than welcome. Um, right. So, uh, yeah. So, so trickle vents. That's what we have, um, and it's fine. You know. But if if you're gonna if you're gonna live in there and sleep in there, then you're gonna get building control anyway, right? So you might want to go down the road of some kind of. Um, I believe there's a couple of guys on the group, and they've got um, air conditioning in, and I can't believe can't remember the term for it. Um, Rick uh, Cam Campbell Row. Um, I think he talks about it a lot on the group. I think that's his name. Sorry if it isn't Campbell. Um, but I think you talk about it a lot, um, and you make a lot of sense, right? So maybe get on the group and ask a question on there. So Geo Webble, Webble, Webble. Mm -hmm. Any reasons we don't put air vents in the garden room? Because he don't, he don't think that we've done it before, but we actually have. We have, we have done that on a couple, yeah. Um, and I tell you where's the pain. It's when you build it at winter. The timber's damp. The air's damp. You get a lot of condensation. The room's painted. It's plastered. You've got water streaming down the door sometimes um, while the building's drying out. But, you know, we, we do tell the customer then. I mean, and we have put dehumidifiers in them sometimes at the winter time as well to try and get some of the moisture out because it is a problem. Right, I'll ask one more because this is 19 minutes long. Right. Mock RTW, are the build pack still relevant if he's intending to build on a concrete base? Yes, yeah, they are, yeah. You would just, again, read the build pack and take out the 4B3s and the 4B2s. Um, the pressure treated ones because obviously you've got your own base down there but don't forget do not forget dpc on your timbers um and if you can your building wants to be the same size as your pad so the cladding overhangs the pad and you've got no risk of water going underneath it one more about the new pods are the darren wareham are the new pods built the same way as our traditional builds no they're completely completely different it's a completely different thing i've got two two types of bases for them um I, t I tell you what my problem is, right? Is I can't find a unit anywhere near in Leeds, yeah? Um, and it's going to be a massive gamble for me as well. Work is crap at the moment, I won't lie. We, you know, we, we've gone really quiet. We've got enough to keep us going, but it's really quiet and it's nothing like it was. So it's going to be a big jump and a big gamble for me. I'm going to need probably maybe 40, 50 grand to get it off the floor, up and running, um, which is going to be a big, big gamble. Um, but that's my problem, can't find a unit and 40, 50 grand to get up and running, but I need to make that jump, maybe. Um, Dragon's Den time, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> yeah, so... Old Deborah Meaden. <laughs> if, yeah, if, if, there's, if there's anybody watching and they're thinking about investing, then maybe maybe a phone call or a message, I don't know. But you're looking at 40, 50 grand to get off the floor, but I know full well that you'll turn that round in a year easily. Right, 
Right, thank you for your questions. We'll get through some more. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. It's very swift in the wall. That wall is by... It's built on the floor, stand it up, it's nice and square, but this building is on its side because the doors are going a different way. David stands back there as far as he can, he might be able to see. So this back wall or side wall, whatever you want to call it, is pitched because the front of our building is higher than the back and the customer wants the rain to travel this way and he'll have his water boat at the back. So you can see the pitch on there. Um, I don't know if you can see the string line, can you David? Yeah. So what, there's a couple of ways of doing this, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to show Basically what I've done, I've fixed the timber to the floor, I've then fixed an upright there, I've then temporarily fixed an upright there, uh, flat wall plumb and then we'll get a front wall plumb off that, but I temporarily fixed one. And then we created the head, now the head it's longer than 4.8 and the timber's 4.8 so we put a little joint plate in it. Um, don't overthink it's a garden room, yeah, so don't overthink it too much, right? If you look at bloody uh, timber construction frames and the King Jacks and all that, and it, it doesn't need it, it's a garden room for Christ's sake, yeah? So a little splice in it like that, which will join it and make it longer, yeah? Um, but of course, when you span that distance then, your timber sags in the middle. So what we did, we've put a string line on the top, we've pulled it taut and we've put two spacers in and we had a third spacer, I'm not sure where it is now. Um, any ideas, anyone? You got it, David? Of course he has. And we had a third spacer. So what we went then, we put two timbers, about maybe 1,200 in, one there, one there. And we got it so that the spacer, the string line is right on the spacer. And then we know that that wall, the top of the wall is straight. It's not level, it's straight, yeah? And then we went and infilled with our studs. And I'm just, like I said, just trying to think of the easiest way to show you how to do it. Um, so I'm gonna build this one. Exactly the same, except we've got a door and a window, but I'm not going to put the window in because I don't know where the customer wants it as of yet, but I do know where he wants the door, so we're going to do that. Right, so first things first, sorry David, I need to get this bottom plate fixed to the floor. Again, we're going to use these ultimate screws um, with stick fit technology. And I'm just going to drive that in there. And what I'm going to do, um, it's a long old one. Look down at it and make sure it's straight. And it is, it's, it's nice and straight, is that? Jen will follow behind me and nail it. And see what she's doing there. Look, she's lining that through with the back wall. There's a door going there. Um, She'll follow, she'll follow behind, like I said. And nail it. If you've watched us before, we don't normally build like this. But because the customer wants his raid running to the back of the build, as opposed to the side of the build, We've been forced to construct it like this. We've put some props in this wall here. And, uh, um, and what we've done, we've plumbed this wall. So it's plumbed that way. We know it's plumbed that way because it's a square frame set on a level floor. Yeah, and we put this in, so that's braced off there. So I can now put this in here. And as long as I keep it in line with that wall, I know I'm good. Just gonna, what I'll do, I'll go around and nail Got everything screwed up. And, and I'm happy with the wall. So that one's on there. Timber down the floor, Jen. Yeah. Shift your level that one. This one, I'm going to temporarily fix this one. This front wall is not fixed yet. And what we'll do, we'll do the walls and we'll plumb them. So that's going to all like that. And what I'm going to do here, because I'm foul of this, I'm just going to put that in there because what I did there. 
Look on that one. I screwed it temporary there. Put this stud in and then realised I couldn't get the screw out so I had to drill an hole so I could get the screw out. So that's my wall. We've all and I know that that is plumb that way and that is plumb that way. So what I'll be able to do now is then jump down is get a tape measure on here and then give Jen the overall measurement of this wall so that I can break my headpiece You on? Right, so we've got 4,952. No, we haven't at all online. We've got. Jesus, I nearly. Get in there. I've got 4,992. Right, so. 4,992 is the length I need. This is my 4.8, although it's not always 4.8. So, what I will do, I will hold my tape on this end. If Davey comes here, look. What? Say 4992. Yeah. So, I'm going to hold mine at 4992. One minute, in middle, Jen. Yeah. Right there, 4992. Jen will then tell me what she's got over here. Right, so that's her piece she needs to cut. It says do it maths and you're not going to fall. What do you have, 186? Yeah. Right, so we're going to join this again. Like I said, you can just, a bit of timber, just join it. Where's 60's gone? So if, if you think, that's now my extended bit of timber, yeah? That's as long as I want it. And that's, that there is, if that makes sense, yeah, that's that stud there, yeah? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this bit of timber like that. Wood stick screws did less splitting as all. Well. I, I would have thought that they would have split, but they haven't. No problem. Right, so let me get that on there. Like I said, I'm just trying to think of the easiest way to show you how to do it. Um, and this in my mind was probably the easiest way, but there are other ways. If you've done any kind of screwing in wood near end grain, it normally splits, so they're quite good. Right, so that now is my elongated length of timber, and I should be able to by myself <laughs> pop that on there. Yeah, just watch it don't fall off and hit your head, Davy. Sit that one on there like that. Now, if Davy goes to this back wall now, he'll be able to see sorry, the dip in the middle. Can you see it, Davy? A little bit. You'll be able to see it when string line's on. One minute, Jen. You've done what? I've put a screw already for this. Right. Is there one on the other end? No. Just gives it a minute. I will do it. Right. Davey, yeah. if you jump up here, when I get down, you'll yeah. be able to see the dip on it. So I've screwed them heads to that <laughs> upright. <laughs> you have to go hook yours on first. Right, one minute and Dave will be able to show you the dip on this. No, no, don't put that in first. Yeah. Put it over the top. There we go. Don't, don't, no, no, I need to get it tight, Jen. And then when you put that in, it makes it tighter. Uh -huh. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
Like I said at the beginning, the string line is an important bit of kit. £3.50 or something. Right, my line's tight there. I'm going to put... David, jump up there. Put it in just like, like David... Yeah. So, if I put my finger on there, yeah, then that touching there and it's touching at that end but you can see the bow in the middle so what Jen's going to do now she's going to put a little bit of slate batten over there if she, she can reach you can make like a guitar look Boing. watch her struggling push it right to end Jen right so the reason why we've done that is because where's the little bit so the reason is, right, what we want now is our timber to be under there like that, just not Can you see the difference there, there David? Yeah, go on, prop up slow, Jen. Let's go a bit more. There, so what we're looking for now is, it just, so it just, a little bit more, just glides under like that, all the way along, and it will take the sag out of that and create the pit from there. Like I say, I'm just, I, or if you had a lot of room as well. Right, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to mark four and just down this timber. Because, of course, we're going to put our timbers at 400 centres. When I'm trying to do these, I'm always trying to think of the best way I can show you how to do it. Uh, other ways of doing this, but I figured this was sort of like the easiest way Right, so I'm up there. Because I know I've got a door going there, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Looking to do. Pass us a full length of timber, please, John. What I am looking to do is find the slate that, that I lost. It's under it's trust. Right, so what I'll do, look, you see they've got the length of timber there. Can you see the line there? Yeah? Yeah. I'm just going to sit 400 there. And I'm going to look at that. It's about plumb there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to so just lift that up slowly. Let me put my glasses on, John, because I don't want to balls it up. Right, go on, mate. Nice and slow. Bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more. Bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more. Bit more. There. Oh, too much. There. And I'm going to mark that timber now. Yeah. I'm going to mark that where it's going, right? I'm believe not. Um, although I'm just guessing it's plumb there. So what I'm going to do now, Jen's going to cut that. There's a slight little angle on it, so I'm going to put the cross this side because I know that the angle, to exaggerate the angle, the angle's going to be like that, and I know that that wants to be on that side, but it's like literally a degree or something, it's not even that. Right, so she's now going to cut that. John's just been pick up the steel. Now, like I said before, we were the first people to be putting steel in these buildings. Um, I didn't see nobody else doing it, doubling up the timbers, and now other people are starting to do steel as well because you get any kind of deflection on your bifold doors. And you got problems. How much was it? Do you know? Yeah. Uh, right, so it was like 145 quid for the steel. Um, right, so you can see the cross there. I don't know, David, can you see the angle there? It's like that. No, it's very hard to see. It's, it's so minuscule, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that timber in there like that. Yeah, and I'm going to show you how to spike this now with a nail gun and with screws. What we'll do, we'll spike the first one with nails and then we'll do the second one with screws. Right, if David goes to that side there. Right, so I want to get it half and half on there on my 400, yeah. What I'm going to do with that, look, I'm going to put my foot there. Now, the arch of my foot has got that wood and it stopped it kicking there, but I'm going to nail it there so the nail doesn't go into my foot. See? And then take my foot away. Nail it, nail it, nail it. And then what I'll do then is get this level. If you're going to get one of these levels, think about what kind of work you're going to do with it because they have a good level. I'm not going to take that away from them, but they're very heavy, aren't they? They're too heavy. Um, we won't advertise them because they're the right bunch of tits, aren't they? Right, so what I'm going to do now, look, is move that the wrong way, classically. Um, can you see that, Davy? Yeah. yeah. So that's plumb now. Just take that, John. And what I'll do, I'll send some nails in there at the top of that. Right, that one's good. 
what I'm going to do now is run in here again and what I'll do is I'll show you the spike in this one with the screws John can I yeah. borrow you David jump up behind me and you might be able to see just one minute John while I put my glasses on right can you see it's not on string line David yeah yep. right so I've got that roughly plumb where I think it's about right John's going to lift it move your fingers a little bit there there go John good yeah. oh Oh, oh, too much. Down. There. Yeah. And I'm going to, again, mark that like that. I'm going to put a little cross there to indicate that I want it that way around when Jen passes me it back. Pass her that. She's going to cut that. And we're going to spike this one with screws, aren't we? So I'll get it the right way around. I'm going to cross it to that side. I'll put it on the centre of that line there, somewhere near. And get it where I think it's about right. Yeah. Right, so what I'm going to do is get my impact driver. And again, I'm going to show you how to do this. Debbie, come to my right side, please, mate. Right, so what I'm going to do, what, what the end of the game is, right? Through it, something like that. Yeah. So I'm going to get a screw. I'm going to get it started. You start it off a bit flat. Yeah, until you're in and then get your angle, yeah? But because it's a screw, it'll wanna pull over, so I'm not gonna snap it up tight first, and then I'm gonna do one on this side. Now them screws are pulling on each other. So it's not it's the timber now. Get another one in that side now, freeze enough. <laughs> So that's free in there. I'm going to see in the top. Just get it so it's level. There you go, John. And then I'm going to put a pencil mark there. So I've got rid of my level now. Don't need my level anymore. So let's say it's moved a little bit. I've got my pencil line. Move it back to my pencil line because I know that was good. And then get some screws in there. And that's, so whether you're going to nail it or screw it, that, that's how you do that. And I know from experience that them two studs will have been enough to take that sag out of that string line all the way down. Yeah, you see there, look. Can jump up, David. Can you see that? There. Uh, and it should be good. And it's good there, look, as well. That's fine. That's straight. It's not level, but it's straight. Um, so what I'm going to do all the way down, stand my 400 up, mark it, pass it back to Jen and get them all fixed and we're going to create a door and a window opening as well. Yep. Right, I'm going to show you how to cut this out now. So there is my structural opening. What, I, what will be a better fix is if I cut that out there and that stud goes straight down to the floor and I fix through into the sole plate rather than cutting it there and spiking through, I'll get a much sturdier fix. So what I'm looking to do now is try this line like that. So that, that there will be the opening. So I'll put that timber on there like that. Draw that side of that line there. I'm now gonna, so that's what I wanna cut out is that bit there. Now you will notice that I put one screw in there and a screw in there. And Jen got overzealous with the nail gun and carried on nailing, so that's going to be a bugger to get. Right, so how am I going to cut this now? Start the saw off. It, it's, it's on the floor, it's low, so I'm going to start off the side of my face like that. Yeah, a couple of back strokes like that. And on this occasion, I'm going to have to keep the saw quite low because I'm going to hit the floor otherwise. Nice and steady. And I'll hear the I'll hear it the floor in a minute. There, yeah, you can hear the sound difference there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna whip this out and show you. Right, so that's my my leg's gonna go in there like that and I'm gonna fix to there like that and then I'm gonna have to rip that out somehow or other. If you're in the end you any dislike of how well nails fixed down. Um, I've took the screws out. David's got a
Guys, I don't know. So they get quite a good fit. Um, I mean, there's only four in there as well. And, and one's pulled through the wood. Look, it's, that, it's got that good effects in there. It, it's pulled straight through the piece of wood. So nailing it, screwing it. It all does a good job. I, I'm, I'm going to stop calling them side and front and back wall because it's all back to front. This wall is tapered. I showed you the, um, the taper on that, but we built that. This wall is tapered. I've showed you how we built that and probably one of the easiest ways you can build it. And what we've done then, we've put in these props. So literally cut a 45 degree angle on them. This is the downside to not sheeting it first. You've got to put a lot more props in, but that now has made the building rigid and it's solid. Yeah, so we've got them in the middle as well to take the bar out of the wall. We've got them in the, in the back, everything's tied in. And I've dropped in this dividing wall because of course we're gonna have um, a store room there. So that's just out of 3B2 CLS. I'll explain noggings when we do the noggings on the installation and why they're stepped and why you can do it not stepped and that doesn't actually make any difference. But what we will do as well, um, when we insulate this, I'll put some timbers across there, which will take that out of that wall, but it's hard to get the insulation in when they're in, so they will go in afterwards. And the, one of the things about the timbers we use, it all works out brilliantly. So it's 89 mil thick. So when you put in a 50 mil insulation, you're left with 39 mil. This timber's 38 mil. So when you put your plasterboard carriers in, that's practically bang on. Same with this steel. Um, are they 125, John? Them, them timbers, I can't remember what they are now, are they? 120, they're about 120 and your steel is 80. And then when we put our CLS on, um, it's like a couple of mil shy, but it works out well as well. So the steel, the steel is 160 mil, is it John? By 80 mil, by five mil thick. Um, John's been and picked that up this morning. Do you remember how much you are? 140 odd pounds or something like that. Um, well worth the extra bit of money. It's a hollow beam. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna lift it up and I am gonna tech screw it to the timber with these tech screws. Uh, they're a sheeting screw, metal sheeting screw, and they will drive into the steel. So, but what we'll do, we'll lift that up. Uh, they'll put some little timbers, just put your hand where the timber's gonna go there to stop the steel coming out, because we want the steel at the front. And then we're gonna put some CLS on the back, which will carry our roof and our plasterboards. Yeah, that makes sense. So they're gonna fire it up now. It is heavy. You all right, David? David's got a bit of a red face on him there, look. John's shoulder pressing. Ah, to me, David. Get it onto that wall, right? right. You'll push it level now, David. Do you want me to pull a bit? That's so, so sort of beam this back onto that. So, we've got the double right, timber there, there which will there, take the weight the of that steel. There, so, you've got a structural opening there now. The, the head's not going to drop down whatsoever, no matter what. Um, what they'll do now, they're going to put two see, blocks on the front. Screw that on first and see then where David's going to screw that, Jen. Is that I'll just stay up and keep it pushed that water. Are you, are you right on your length, John? Yeah. Do you want to come to you a little touch? So. Oh, right, okay. About five mil, isn't it, Davy? So, Davy will bang this on. It's simply to hold the steel from falling off the front of the building while we're fixing it um, and to hold it in the correct oh, location. Lower, I've got to make it stronger, yeah. Don't you slip off and get my fingers. <laughs> And that'll, that'll do, that's, that's fine, isn't it? He's going he's gonna to for two. And then he's going to put one John's side as well. And I'll show you these tech screws going in, in a second when it's in its final position. So you can see there, so you can see over there, the same height as that the side wall there. So you've got your taper there, 70 mil, 5 mil front to back, as requested by the customer, because that's the way he wanted it to go. Um, and I'm going to show you the roof detail on that tomorrow. There's loads of detail in these videos, so I hope you've enjoyed it and it's not been too much of a sleep fest for you. Um, you can see the dividing wall there, that's three by two. Let's talk about a few things while it's cutting this. We've got loads of props in there to keep the building solid. Um, we've yet to put a window, just point where the window's going there, Jen, uh, above your level somewhere. 
So the window's going to go above the level, but what I'll do is I'll get the customer to come in and tell us where it's going to go, and we will retro cut it out. So that's, that's I'll show, much. retro is afterwards. So I'll show you how to cut the um, window out after it's been boarded. Um, it's, it's quite easy, but there's a bit of a technique to it. So you'd like, if you haven't decided where your window's going, you want to get a feel of it when you put your walls up, get your walls up and then we'll locate where the window's going to go. So it's 110 mil self-tapping still, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up through there. And that'll tie that steel into that wall. Remember there, that 4x2 we've put on there. So that will also get fixed into that steel um, and then it will get fixed into the side of there, through there as well. And then we're going to rip another bit down as well. So we'll have a full piece of timber on there, which will take some upside down and allow plasterboard fixing as well. For today, uh, we've got the, obviously the back wall. You see this, that we, we always do it that way. That's how we always do it. We put the side walls as well. They're, they're raked. Um, I showed you how to do that one putting your props to support the walls. Tomorrow we'll OSB it and then we'll put the roof on there. and you've seen the steel go on as well. Um, and don't forget, we are nominated for the most charitable business. I am gonna keep banging on about it, but you've gotta pay something for this free information. I'd like you to vote for us. The link will be at the bottom. If you wanna build one of these yourself, the build pack link will be at the bottom as well. I've no doubt in my mind that you will be able to do it. Loads have done it before you. And there'll be a link to the raffle for the pod. Um, or £20,000, really need to get them tickets moving now, so I need to sell them about another 7,000 tickets. And a big thank you for getting over 80,000 subscribers on YouTube, that's bloody amazing that. I remember when I got over, how many did you have to get to monetize, John? Was it 1,000? A 1,000. A thousand. Yeah, 100,000. Yeah, 100, John tells me I get some kind of gold button or something if we get... If we get to 100,000, which enables to block people, apparently, John says. For life. For life. So, Big Roscoe. <laughs> right, I'm not going to mention you again. I'm going to leave you to your own no, devices. We're send Charlie <laughs> John says Charlie Zelen Zelenoff. Yeah. Charlie Zelenoff will come around to see you. Um, but that's it. Please like, subscribe, hit the subscribe button and follow us. And don't forget, the Stern Hammer. Have you seen the six numbers yet? Have we brought the six numbers down yet? Some people think they've seen them, some people don't think they've seen them, but they will be on shore. Um, I think we might definitely have one definitely a week. So like we've been here, tomorrow will be Friday, we'll be here a week. So we will let you know if it's been on shore this week. That's what we'll do, yeah, rather than wasting your time. The yeah, the number you think you've saw isn't the number that it is. I can assure you of that, because a couple of people have said so, but it isn't that. Unless I've missed the comments where they have seen it, because it is written. They want to keep it under wraps anyway. Yeah, I mean, you, you get that number. Don't put it on bloody YouTube on comments yeah, and that. You want to keep it to yourself. The less people that know the number, the more chance you've got That's of winning <laughs> of winning the Sternos, the Sternos, Sternos 13 ounce hammer. So that's it. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching and good evening.